Uh, go to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. I might go a little bit past uh, 3.30. I'm not going to say I might. I, I am. First book of Thessalonians first, chapter book 4. Book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. So it says, this is the will of God. We know that the will of God is God's laws. The will of God is, God, is us keeping God's laws. Read. That ye should abstain from fornication. So the will of God, we know that the laws of God say you abstain from fornication. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We know that that is, we know that fornication is sin. It goes against God's laws. Read. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. You have to know how to possess your vessel, <clears throat> your body, your life in sanctification and honor. You say you're an Israelite, you say you repent it, prove it. You have to know yourself. You have to know what you can handle and know what you can't handle. And the things that you can't handle, keep yourself away from it. If you see yourself, if you, you, you go on somewhere, you, you in the grocery store, you somewhere, and it, it happened to just fall in front of you, run the other way. And I said run the other way. I didn't say just walk off like it's all good. Run to get, a, get far away from it. You got to keep yourself far away from it. Because your lust, like I said, your lust will be very subtle where it'll try to creep up on you and you don't realize it until it's too late. And now you're bitten if you're not spending time with the brothers, if you don't have a counselor, if you ain't got nobody that you're talking to. If you ain't you ain't got no a brother or a sister that you're talking to about building yourself up from to fight off your lust, to fight off your temptation. It'll catch you off guard, especially first and foremost if you're not meditating on the scriptures that got to do it. If you battle lust, you know you. If you know you battle lust, you battle that spirit of fornication, that spirit of a whoremonger. You have to study scriptures that deal with that because those that's what you got to be meditating on all the time. Because the moment you're not meditating on it. That's the time that the mo that that the that's the time that that temptation gonna rise up and catch you off guard subtly. It's gonna bite, and it's gonna be a deadly bite. Uh, read on, verse five. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. So we can't follow after that lust of concupiscence. That concupiscence is an evil sexual desire, a strong sexual desire. We can't follow after that. You see them, we see you driving on the express where you got billboards with strip clubs and adult stores and all of that stuff. If you go the same route to work every day or you go the same route, you can't be looking at that stuff. You might see it one time, you ain't know it was there. But after that, you know it's there. Why are you looking at it? It's going to put a spirit of lust on you. You have to know yourself. You can't put yourself in harm's way. Because if you put yourself in harm's way enough, it's going to weaken your spirit. You're going to become comfortable. If, if you ain't meditating on, on, the, on the scriptures that deal with your lust, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wear on you and wear on you and wear you on you. And before you know it, you're going to let your guards down, and now you're in somebody's bed. And then the excuse that you would use is, hey, I was, you know, I showed, him they was, I showed the sister she was Israel. Well, I was showing the brother he was Israel. But then, but then you let the guards down because you wasn't met. You didn't build your spirit up so your spirit is strong to be able to fight off your temptation because you wasn't studying, you wasn't meditating and studying on your lust. So because you wasn't doing that, yeah, you, you, you know the history, you know how to go through all the scriptures show we Israel, all the scriptures show that Israel was black. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be dealing with no sister, no, nobody of the opposite sex on that level. At one point, I gave you, they give you a card. Oh, yeah, I'm looking into this. Other, call, the card, call the number on the card, and they can help you. Call the number on the card. The brothers can help guide you through the scriptures, such and such and such and such. Brothers, yeah, you know the scriptures, but you're dealing with, hey, here's this flyer. Check this flyer out. Check the information out. Call the number. Go on the website. She's, hey, can, can I learn from you? You, you gave me the flyer. No, nah, call the number on the website. We got men set up for that. All right, see, fam, gone. You gone. Don't even waste your time. Ain't no, oh yeah, give me a call. Give me, go ahead, give me a call. I'll go through the scripture. No, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. Call, that's why, the, that's why our information is on the flyer. So you can point them to the website. You can point them to YouTube. You can point them to Facebook. You can point them to where they need to be so that they can learn more and get right. Not take it upon yourself. You know what, uh, 
you know, I know the scriptures. I could do this. No, you're going to get yourself caught up into something. The scriptures say, let, let, let him that think he stand, take heed lest you fall. Especially if you know you battle a lustful spirit. Nah, bro. Stay away from that. If you're if you going on pornographic websites and all the various sites, put a lock on your phone. Have, have a brother put a lock on your phone where you can't go to certain, certain websites. If you're married, have your rib do it. Do things, put safeguards up so that you won't fall into that sin. And most importantly, you have to be meditating on those scriptures that deal with the story that you battle. You got to know yourself. Go to uh, first. First Corinthians chapter seven and one. The book of First Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So Paul is letting us know it's hey, it's good to remain unmarried. It's good to remain unmarried because then you could be focused one hundred percent on pushing the truth. You can be focused one hundred percent on traveling here, traveling there going here, waking up the 12 tribes. You can put your 100% focus for the sisters. Same thing. You say you, you are married, you can focus on doing the work of the Lord. You don't have, you don't have the extra um, thought of, okay, what I got to do to make sure my husband is good, make sure my Lord good. Brothers, you, you don't have the extra thought of, um, okay, I got to make sure I, I'm working a good job working. You got to make sure I'm, I got to put this class together. To, so my so I can edify my rib. You ain't got to think about those things. All of your focus is on building up the nation of Israel, going out and teaching, doing what you got to do. It says it's good for a man to stay that way, but read on. Verse 2, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. If that ain't your spirit, don't try to fake the funk. Because ev eventually, if you, ain't, if you ain't meditating on those things that's necessary to keep you out of fornication, to keep you out of the heartless bed, you're going to fall into it. Because you're not putting those safeguards up. You're not doing what's necessary. But it says, the safeguard, it says, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Not saying that you just jump and go find a, the next, the first woman that got fringes on and you marry her. No, you still need to go through a proven process. But what it's saying is, it's better to marry than a, to the burn in your lust and you know you can't, you can't contain it to the point where you end up falling into that sin of fornication. It's better to go prove, get a, get, get a, find a, a, a righteous sister that's, that's moving and keeping the commandments, putting in work, and prove Huh? And in the proving process, you prove the sister and you marry the sister. That's the, it says, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Go to Tobit chapter 8. To avoid fornication, let every, let every um, man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. The book of Tobit, chapter 8. Uh, started, yeah, 8 and 6. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Of them came mankind. Uh -huh. Thou, go ahead. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. So, 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 so to every single brother, every single sister, there's a, there's a brother, there's a sister that's made for you. You just got to get your spirit, for, for first and foremost, you got to get your spirit right. They got to get their spirit right. And then when it, when it does come to the process of proving, y'all you both still have to continue to get your spirit right and you're learning each other as you're going through that proving process. Read. Verse 7. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. So that's that proven process. So we don't, when, when uh, First Corinthians say, let it, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. It's not saying you burning in your lust and you just go, bam, go just go get married. You ain't proved the sister or nothing. Because now you done married the sister off lust. So the, 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 the starting of that marriage is going to be a rocky road because it's just lust. 
So the, the, the love is going to have to be built over time, and you already married because you, burn, you was burning in your lust, so you just jumped the gun. Can't jump the gun. Go through the process. It's a purpose of the process is there. So you don't end up married to a dragon or married to a demon because you was burning in your lust. You got married just because you was lusting. No, you still have to deal with that lustful spirit. You still have to deal with that spirit. You have to study the scriptures. If, you, if, you, if your battle is fornication, if your battle is lust, brothers, sisters, you have to search the scriptures, find the scriptures that deal with that specifically. Thou shalt not commit adultery. If a man look at a woman with lust for her, he has committed adultery. You got to meditate on those things and make them scriptures a part of your spirit. So when that, them temptations arise, you know how to turn away from it. You can recognize it right there on the spot. Like, oh, no, that's, that's Satan. Let me go. Hey, can I get another assignment? Can I get assigned to a different area? You get away from whatever is going to call you to fall. You got to get away from it. Far, very far away from it. Go to, um, from, uh, go to Hebrews 13 and 4. It's a morning read on. Therefore, mercifully ordained that we may become aged together. So I take not my sister for lust, meaning that you're, you, you, you dealing with your, you dealing with the lustful spirit. You, you, you quieting that lustful spirit that's within you. You doing what's necessary. You meditating on the scriptures that have to deal with lust and fornication so that when the lust arise, you able to silence it with the scriptures. You're able to not yield into it because you're meditating on it. And it says, therefore, mercifully ordained that we may become aged together. Meaning that once you, when you get married, you marry with that sister for life. And that, that, that process of you becoming one flesh is going to be an ongoing process of, of the sister becoming one mind with your mind. But you have to go through the process and trust the process and be patient through the process so that you don't cut yourself short and fall into fornication. You have to make sure that you are doing what is necessary to keep your, your temptation at bay. You have to know yourself. Go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So marriage is honorable in all. So you got to battle your lust. You prove if you, you, you got to battle your lust to where you got it at base. So when the temptation arises, you know how to apply the scriptures. So then when you get to the point, you've proven a sister, you've proven a brother. You've proven them to learn them, to learn what they, they, they um, for lack of a better term, what comes to mind is they, what they pros and cons are. Because it's going to be pros and cons of any brother or sister. But you, the proven process is, okay, okay, she got this con, she got that con, that's this, this, this going on. But I could deal with that. I could, I, could, I could work to build, help build her up in that. But if it's things, that's hap things that you can't deal with, that's the purpose of proving. Because if it's stuff that you know that you're not able to um, cope with, so to say, that might not be the brother or sister for you. But if y'all, you've proven the, the various pros and cons, it's gonna, like I said, it's going to be pros, it's going to be pros, and it's going to be some cons. But you have to work through that, and all in all, during that process, if you got a spirit of lust, you got to still be studying the scriptures dealing with lust. Because you, it's either one or two things going to happen. You're going to do something where you uh, end up making it a backdoor marriage, where you wasn't, you, you, wasn't, you wasn't battling your lust, so now you done laid down with the sister you've proven ahead of time. Now, now you have to go, of course, you got to go forward and get married, but then it's a, it's a backdoor marriage. You cut the process short. Or you ain't, battle, you, ain't, you ain't studying to battle your lust, and you end up committing fornication with a sister that's not that sister because you was, ba you was burning in your lust, and you wasn't dealing with it. And you ended up, you may end up, Watching porn, you watching, you looking at every sister that walked down the street. You at work, you watching sisters, you flirting with sisters. No, you have to battle your lust. You got to keep your lust at bay. Go to uh, from here real quick. James chapter one. And we all we all got to remember this. 
Because when we when we fall into our lust, it's us. It's ain't, it ain't the most high. It ain't nobody else. It ain't the brother that was it ain't the it ain't our brother that's sitting next to us. It ain't your wife. It ain't nobody but you. Read James chapter 1 and 13. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So when you're tempted, you ain't being tempted of God. God is holy. God is the most high God. He, 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 he's not tempted with sin. He's not tempted to say, you know what, that look good. I'm going to go. No, that's not, that's not the nature of the most high God. That's our nature. Read on. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So we're tempted when we're drawn away of our own lust. Of our own lust. That means you have to know yourself and you got to be studying the scriptures that deal with your lust, with you, what you battle with, what you struggle with. That's what you should be calling and getting counsel for. It's how to battle your lust and your sin. Because it's your lust and your sin that'll pull you out and have you doing something you ain't got no business doing. Fornicating, stealing, hating your brother. All of those things you have to, you have to know yourself and you have to be studying the scriptures that deal with it. Not saying that you're not going to study the history, not saying that you're not going to study the curses, not saying that you're not going to study none of that stuff. But the, the whole purpose... Um, and that goes into the next scripture, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. The whole purpose, our whole duty in this life is to keep the, is to keep the commandments. We have to keep the commandments. Ecclesiastes, I didn't even address Hebrews, but go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. We have to fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. We got to get ourselves right. We got to get our minds right. We have to meditate on the scriptures. And the scriptures that we should be meditating on is our lust. Whether that lust is fornication, whether that lust is covetousness, that lust is hating your brother, that lust is stealing. Whatever that your lust is, you got to be meditating on the scriptures to keep your spirit at bay because you can't do it yourself. You can't do it with your carnal mind. You're not going to be able to battle off sin with your carnal mind. You need God's laws. That's why he gave us his laws. That's why he gave us his book. That's why he preserved it for us. So we know what we need to do to have life. From there, go to Job chapter 31 and verse 4. I mean, 31 and verse 1. This is some of the things that we have to do to battle off specifically fornication, that lustful spirit. But it goes with anything. Read. The book of Job chapter 31 verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? We have to make a covenant with our eyes that, nah, I see it. If, if, okay, I'm walking down the street, a sister come out this store, and she, um, she got her body. She, she's thick, so to say, whatever, the, whatever the case may be. She come out that store, she get in your line of, start, line of sight. That should be the first and last time that you see the sister, because you should, right from that point, you Look at the other way. Cross the street. Keep walking. Don't even look back. Sister, sister, a brother come out tall, dark, handsome. He got big feet. That's your first time seeing him. Go the other way. I ain't going to get too graphic. Go the other way. Don't even, don't even look back at him. Don't, don't even double take. When you double take, you in your lust. You take a double take, you in your lust. Because some, in some instances, you, can't, you may not control you in a line and you in line at a grocery store and a sister standing in front of you or a brother that's standing, standing in front of you that you would normally be attracted. You can't control that, but you can control if you keep looking at the person and you keep you, you creating a scene in your mind. You can control all of that. So the first, the first uh, sight or so to say, you might not be able to control it, but that second, that third, that fourth take, that's all you. That's all your lust. You got to make sure that you're doing what's necessary to not fall into your lust. Uh, read on. Verse 2, for what portion of God is there from above, and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? If you look at a woman with lust, or sisters, if you look at a brother with lust, what, what is the portion of God from that? You're going to get destroyed because you're not, you're, not, you're not upholding his commandments. You are light to the world. You got to think about it. It's not just about you. 
Because you could be, it could be a, a brother or sister that know you, that, that know you an Israelite, and they know you keep, you say you keep the commandments. You talking to them, amen, the scriptures say this, amen, Deuteronomy 28, amen, we the Israelites. And then now they see you double taking at a woman, double taking at a sister. They see you in the store. Like, hey, bro, I thought you was an Israelite. Hey, sis, I thought you was, I thought you was an Israelite. Why you, what you looking at that brother for? What you looking at that sister for? So when you, so the thing, the thing about it, if we don't battle our lust, it's not just us we affect. We affect the nation. Because the scriptures say that you, blas- you blaspheme the name of God by your works. I'm butchering it. It's a, I, think it's a, I think it's Romans 2 or Romans 3. But if, when we do, when we in error, don't believe, it's always somebody watching you. Whether you a brother that just came in, you only been in less than a year, more, it's always somebody watching you at work because they see that you move different. They see you don't do the same things other people do. It's always somebody watching you. And the minute you fall, that's when you're going to know. The minute you fall or do something, that's when you're going to know that they was watching you. So they're going to be like, hey, man, I thought you was. Go ahead, you got something. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. And sometimes you, they might see, that person might see like that girl or something way down the street. And they, and they already seen it, but you didn't see her yet. And they just watching you. Yep. See how you're going to react and what you're going to do. You know what I mean? So they always watch you. So we got we to keep those things in mind and make a covenant. If, if lust is your, lust, porn. Fornication, if that's your battle, make a covenant with your eyes that you will not, you're not going to think upon a maid. And that goes both ways. Read on. Verse 3. Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Does uh-huh. not he see my ways and count all my steps? The Most High God sees everything we do. We can never forget that. He sees everything that we do. All the hidden things. We, he sees all of that. We got to keep that in mind and keep our spirit in check according to the commandments. Go to uh, Sirach 21 and 1. These are the things that we got to do to battle off that, 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 that spirit of fornication specifically, but it goes with whatever your lust is, whatever you battle with. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 1. My son, has thou sinned? Do so no more. Let's say you do stumble. Get back up. Don't do it no more. Correct yourself. Don't do it no more. Read. But ask pardon for thy former sins. Uh huh. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. Flee from fornication as from the face of a serpent. Don't come near it. Don't be like, oh, I can look, I can look at the system. I ain't, a, ain't, a, I ain't, ain't no harm in that. No harm, no play. That's what a lot of the, 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 the as the scriptures say, the old adulterers that doters, that's what they think. Oh, ain't nothing wrong. I done, I done came across many a Christian brother that, a, in Christianity, and they be like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with looking. You know, I can look. No, it's something very wrong with looking because the scriptures say don't look. They say if you, the scriptures say if you look with a woman with lust for you, committed adultery already. No, it do matter. Right. You, you ha- we have to, we got we to gotta keep our mind on the scriptures. Don't come too near it, because if you come too near it, it will bite thee, meaning you will fall if you play with it, if you dabble in it. Read on. Verse 3. All iniquity is as a two-edged sword. It says all iniquity is as a two-edged sword. Just like these swords, these are these swords that's on the front of the leadership table, these are two-edged swords. Meaning that if you swing one way, you swing it one way, let's say it ricochet and come back, it's gonna cut you. Meaning that that two-edged sword, when you fall into your sin, you don't affect just you. You affect everybody that was may have been looking up to you, may have been following after you. If you if you proven a brother or sister, you affect that brother or sister. You affect everybody. It's a two-edged sword. When you sin, that's why the scriptures say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because as we keep in the commandments, we should be being a light to our brother or sister. But when you break the commandments, now you're being darkness. Cause if you, if, because if, if, if a brother or sister was looking up to you, you may cause that brother or sister to fall. You may, you may cause that brother or sister to, to, to lose faith if they, if they 
foundation of faith is not strong. You might cause them to fall out this truth by your sin. So we always got to keep that mind. We have to get, be continually get ourselves right. We all got issues. We all got problems. But are you working on it? Or are you just throwing it under the rug like it ain't there? We have to be actively correcting our sinful ways. Because if not, it's only a matter of time before we're going to fall. We can't fake the funk. We have to be actively working on, our, on our, uh, getting ourselves right. Go to Sirach 37 and 27. The book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 27. My son, prove thy soul in thy life, and see what is evil for it, and give not that unto it. So we have to know ourselves. You got to know yourself. Like I said earlier, if you're watching a movie, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with watching a movie, but if you know that movie got a, a, a sex scene in it, a, a scene that's a little bit too romantic and it's going to put a spirit on you, don't watch it. Or if you're watching it, get up and go to the bathroom when that scene come on. Don't, don't sit there and be like, oh, I can handle it. And I've, been, I've been reading and I've been studying. No, get up and go. Don't, don't allow yourself to get that spirit put up on you because you might not know. That spirit might cause you to fall and, and lead you up out of here. Prove your soul in this life and see what is evil for it. And don't give that unto it. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Like, oh, I've been studying for three years. You know, I've been studying. I've been meditating on the scriptures, dealing with fornication. I can handle it. No, don't give that to you because it's not good for you. Get out the room. Read. Verse 28. For all things are not profitable for all men. Neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. You can't compare yourself to another brother or sister because another brother or sister may be able to watch it. Watch that, that, that um, in the movie that they may be able to watch that scene and it don't even affect them. It don't put a spirit on them. But you not like that, you better turn your head, close your eyes. Like we tell us, hey, put your hands over your eyes. No, you better do something so that you don't allow that spirit to jump up on you. You have to get, you have to get yourself right constantly. Um, sorry, I know it, it, I probably seem like I'm rushing through. I'm trying to f finish because I don't want to go too, I don't want to bump into the bishop class. Psalms chapter 4 and verse 5. 4 and verse 4. A couple more scriptures. The book of Psalms chapter 4, verse 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed. This is going into us examining ourselves. You have to be, we have to constantly examine ourselves day, day, daily. It's not a, you, you examine yourself Sunday and then the rest of the week you don't examine yourself. No, it's a daily thing. We got a daily, because daily, you, when you go to work, you go in the stores, daily, there's temptations out there. It's always some temptations. It's always something out there. You on your phone, you on Facebook, it's a temptation somewhere. They got the little ads that be popping up and all, it's, me examine yourself daily. Read. And be still. So it says, stand uh -huh. in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Say lot. Uh, read on. Verse 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. So examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. That's 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. This is the same thing. It's saying the same thing. Examine yourself to make sure that you are actually walking uprightly according to the commandments. And then it says, uh, offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Go to Sirach chapter 35 and 1. Sirach chapter 35 and 1. The book of Sirach chapter 35 verse 1. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We keep the commandments. You're offering an offering. You're offering a sacrifice, a, a sacrifice, a peace offering. That's what. That's the whole. The whole purpose of um, the sacrificial law was act us actually keeping the laws. We weren't supposed to be. You you sac you you sacrifice. You sin. Oh, you know what? I can sacrifice. I can sacrifice a. I can sacrifice a bullock. You know, I'm going to go ahead and sin because all I got to do is sacrifice. No, that's not, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. It's, put, it's all in our actions. Our thought process is I'm going to keep the commandments because my father told me to keep the commandments. 
That's why we in captivity. That's why we seeing the evils that's going on in the world. That's why the world is turned upside down because Israel wanted to dibble and dabble in their sin. Israel wanted to dibble and dabble in fornication. So now we in hell, we, we on the bottom because we on the bottom, we trying to come out the bottom, but we still got people dibbling and dabbling in their sin. We have to recognize and know keeping God's laws, that's how we sacrifice. That's how we offer an offering. That's our sacrifice. That's how we be a living sacrifice to the Most High, by keeping his co commandments no matter what we face, no matter what we come up against. Now go back to Sirach 21 and 2 real quick. The book of Sirach chapter 21 verse 2. close out with this. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent, for if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. So we talking about the topic of fornication and lust. Flee from fornication as from the face of a serpent. Don't go near it. Don't go near no por porn pornography. Don't go no, no pictures of no half-naked women. None of that stuff. Steer clear from it. Same thing with sisters. Don't be looking at no pictures with no brothers with their chest out and all of that. Steer clear from it. Get up and walk out the room. You're watching a movie, and it's, it's a scene. Brothers playing basketball, got their shirts off. You know you can't handle it. Leave the room. Don't look at it, because it's going to put a spirit of lust on you. It's going to put that spirit up on you. Read. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion. It says, because if you come too near, my bad, if you come too near it, it's going to bite. It's going to bite you. And it says, the teeth thereof as are the teeth of a lion. If you get by a lion, you're going to die. You ain't no coming back from that. You're going to die. And the scriptures say, the wages of sin is death. Read. Slaying the souls of men. When we fall into our lust and temptation and our sin, it slays, it, it says, it's slaying the souls of men. That's Romans 6 and 23. The wages of sin is death. We got to keep that in mind. That's how, that has to be our mindset as we, as we are repenting. That if I sin, the most high going to judge me. If I sin, I'm not going to get the kingdom. That's the thought process that we have to have as repentant Israelites. We can't be dibbling and dabbling in sin. We can't come near it. We can't be entertaining it on no level. We got to keep that in mind. That's, our, that's, that's us walking uprightly. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth